throughout the Bible, there are stories of people who heard from God in a dream. Author and Pastor Jane Hammond says God still speaks to us in that way because it has happened to her. Years ago, Jane Hammond dreamed her brother was in trouble and decided to pray. The next day, she found out her brother had been in a car accident but survived. Jane realized God was speaking to her through that dream. After studying scripture, she says that God has very specific reasons for speaking to us through our dreams. If you are a believer, I believe that if God is speaking to you, then it is your responsibility to learn to discern the voice of God. In her book, Dreams and Visions, Jane explains how to interpret our dreams and what you can do to better understand God's voice. Well, Jane Hammond is here with us now, and it's wonderful having you back. It's great to see you. Great to be back with you, Gordon. All right, let's talk about dreams and visions. I, I know a lot of, everybody dreams. That's right. Uh, and some dreams are from God. How, how do you tell? Well, I think that when, when you wake up with a sense that it's something that you're remembering, something that you feel stirred in your emotions, something that you feel like a deep sense of soul searching, mm. it's usually one of the first indications that's something that you need to remember, you need to write it down, you need to record it, and then pray into it and see what it is that the Lord may be trying to say to you. But so, so, some of the dreams that um, we have, though, some, sometimes shock us, and we, and, and we just instantly say, that can't be from God. Now, you had a dream, and, and it was kind of a creepy one. Tarantulas were uh, involved in yes. that. And <laughs> I tell you, if, if that had happened to me, it would have been, all right, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. <laughs> this, you know, get out of my mind. I, I, don't, I don't need that. I don't even need the memory. Right. Why, why didn't you do that? Well, it was a funny dream because we were in the, at the time of the dream, we were building our house and we were building our church. And in the dream, I was standing on the street looking at my house going up and they were tiling my house, tiling the roof of my house with this new, uh, brand new product that was created out of the dried preserved bodies of tarantula spiders. That's what they were putting on my house. And everybody That's else was, weird dream. it was very weird. <laughs> Actually, it was one of those dreams that when I told it to my husband, he said, honey, please don't tell this dream to anybody. So here I am on television telling it to everybody. Um, but when I, when I had this dream, everybody else was so thrilled with what was happening. And I was going, I don't know, but there was so much joy. So when I woke mm. up from the dream, I just laughed. And throughout the day, when I would think of the dream, I would laugh. And so finally, I looked up the tarantula in the dictionary because in my mind, that did not mean anything good. And it said that the name of the tarantula spider actually comes from a place in Italy, which was, which is called Toronto. Mm -hmm. And at the time of this dream, we were in the middle of the 1990s where the Toronto outpouring was happening, where there was a lot of joy, a lot of laughter. And so God actually used this as a symbol, believe it or not, of joy in my life, of rejoicing in my life, even though it was a kind of a creepy dream. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever tell that to John and Carol? I have, yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> and the interesting uh, other thing about the spider is that it has eight eyes on the top of its head, mm -hmm. and eight is, of course, the number of new beginnings, and I, an eye is a symbol of vision, and so we felt like the Lord was bringing us into a brand new season of vision, which He, in fact, did, so. Okay. Well, for, for, <laughs> where do you go from there, for, right? <laughs> I have no idea where to go from here. Um, but for, uh, for someone that's having that kind of dream and may not have the resources that you have or the experience you have, right. where, where did they go? Okay. So the, the, the place that somebody starts with a dream is obviously by actually writing it down. Now, some people don't want to get up in the middle of the night and actually write a dream down, but everybody today has a cell phone yeah, with a voice recorder it easy, on yeah. it. So just get up in the middle of the night, just speak the dream into the phone. Because let me tell you, last year, my husband had this dream. And in the dream, it, he said, the Lord showed him, said, these are the steps that you need to implement to bring this nation into revival. Wow. And that's all he remembers. He doesn't remember the steps. And I said, did you not get up and write it down, honey? Have I taught you nothing? <laughs> 
<laughs> so just think where we would be had he remembered his dream. Because Did we sleep on the couch the next night. Because right. <laughs> we've got to write our dreams down. Yeah. We've got to somehow record them so that we can pray about it, so that we can take it step by step. Then I like to encourage people to kind of make a list of the symbols that are in the dream. And then because we have the mind of Christ, um, and the Holy Spirit inside of us, which is what you need to interpret a dream, uh, then just start writing two or three descriptive words about what that symbol may represent to you. And if, for example, with the tarantula, I kind of got stuck, I just looked it up. I just looked it up and let the Holy Spirit speak to me through resources. Um, now, I don't always think that just Googling something and saying, I dreamed about this, what does this mean? Because symbols are very personal. Mm -hmm. And I believe that people have a, a, an individual personal language of symbolism. It's not as easy as just say, having a symbol and plugging in a meaning. You've got to listen to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that has to. There has to be that witness within you. That's right. Uh, otherwise, it, it it will become ultimately meaningless. That's you, right. You won't get any benefit from it. It won't. It won't resonate with you. But a lot of people say that this is hard. But you know, it in it says in the word that that the things of the spirit must be spiritually discerned. So if it is in fact a spiritual dream, it must be spiritually discerned. So you can't just use um, a, a book off the shelf. To interpret it. Well, you do have a book off the shelf. I do have a book off the shelf, actually. <laughs> now that you mention it, yes. Well, you mentioned it. Dreams and visions. You're, you're updating this, and this you want this to be a guide where where it's not something where a, a book off the shelf. Here's here's what that symbol That's means, right. but here's how you can discover. That's right. That's right. How you can uh, the principles you can use to go ask the Holy Spirit, what does it mean? That's right. And I, I believe that the Holy Spirit will teach us our own kind of personalized in, individual language mm -hmm. of symbolism. And the longer you do it, the easier it gets. Uh, the more proficient you become with to listening to the voice of God and understanding how God speaks to you help will help you that when you dream, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be this lengthy, difficult, challenging process. Yeah, the Holy Spirit speaks your language. Yes, and he, he does. speaks your experience. That's exactly right. And he right. knows your life and he knows how to interpret it for exactly you. Exactly right. Well, why, why are you doing the updated version? Just... Uh, because we you know when I first wrote the book, there were very few products on the market that even addressed None dreams and visions. It was really one of the first. Um, but here we are now 20 years later, and I think that now in the body of Christ, it is much more understood that God is speaking in dreams and visions. And so I've gone in with maybe some additional keys and some additional perspectives. Because when I first wrote the book, I really wrote it for believers so that they could understand their own personal dreams. But I believe that we're living in a day, you know, it says in Acts chapter 2, that in the last days I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Right not just Christian flesh, but right. all, all flesh. flesh. And I believe that we're living in a day that God is pouring His Spirit out on Muslim flesh, on yeah. Buddhist flesh, on humanist flesh. God is speaking to people Dreams that are not saved. Dreams and visions are happening around the world. It's, it's a phenomenon. And they're looking for the interpretation. It's true. What does this mean? And so I am encouraging people in the body of Christ, become proficient in hearing the voice of the Lord for yourself so that God can use you as a Joseph or a Daniel, that when God brings an unbeliever or somebody that's from a different faith or background into your pathway, that you will have words that can speak into their heart, just like Daniel did to open up the heart of Nebuchadnezzar. Do you think, do you think every Christian can be a Joseph? I believe that if, and, uh, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Mm -hmm. So I believe any believer can hear the voice of God. And so my bottom line answer to that is yes. Are there probably some people that have maybe a greater proficiency in that? Perhaps, yeah. but I believe that it is my heart and my passion to see the entire body of Christ trained to hear the voice of God, whether he's speaking in a dream, whether he's speaking in a vision, or even in a still small voice. Right. We can all use God's phone number. It's That's Jeremiah right. 33 3. Call right. to me. That's right. And I will <laughs> answer you. That's right. Uh, I'm not going to give this word to somebody else, I will give it to you. Call to me and I will answer you. Well, you can learn more in Jane's book. It's called Dreams and Visions, and you can find out how to get a copy by just going to CBN.com.